let's start to consider what the impact the impact of exercise and i guess we're talking about lifelong exercise really sort of like a lifelong participation in exercise what is the impact of exercise on cardiovascular health and there's all kinds of aspects of this i'd like to address with you some in a bit more detail than others i just want to sort of make a sort of i guess an initial point which is really likely to be worth a mark and super easy to consider if we are active and healthy we get a down hour a reduced risk of heart attack now heart attacks are called myocardial infarctions if you want to get posh in your exam but we can call it a heart attack, no problem. So it's, it's a decreased risk of a heart attack. And we're going to look at some of the reasons why that might be the case. But we'd also tend to find that we get a decreased risk of both types, both types of stroke. Now, one type of stroke, I'm not going to get into the details of, of the different types of stroke, but one type of stroke is where we get blood clots. Another type is where the actual blood vessel actually becomes damaged and bursts. So both types are decreased. So the tendency or the risk of them is decreased through regular exercise. So where, with this, with these facts in mind, I sort of want to go into a little bit more detail on a couple of points. So the first one with a bit more detail is I want to consider that we get a down hour reduction in cholesterol. Okay, and specifically... LDL cholesterol, meaning low density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is the one that's considered to be negative. Now, in order to do achieve this and to show you this, I'm going to bring in my kind of ha handy circle tool. And I want to sort of consider that we've got here, and I'll draw this with a bit of a pink outer layer, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to imagine that we've got uh, kind of a red smooth muscle layer and i'm going to go a tiny bit smaller and i'm going to imagine that just here we've then kind of got the inner layer of our blood vessel so imagine that this is our blood vessel here and the only thing i'm going to do additionally is i'm going to get my red and i'm going to fill up this layer here we've got our blood vessel here okay so notice that the the, the, the red bit is effectively the smooth muscle layer now what happens with cholesterol is effectively they're kind of like fatty deposits and these fatty deposits move through these blood vessels and it might be that this fatty deposit sort of builds up here and again if i fill that in hopefully that's not going to break everything from if i fill that in there that fatty deposit is effectively going to start blocking that artery and it's going to it's going to go about sort of increasing resistance to blood flow in other words blood pressure okay now what we're finding with exercise is that we can effectively reduce these placky deposits that way and we can cause them to disappear and not be as pre present now when these build up this is what we refer to as atheroma or atherosclerosis so what we're saying here is that exercise can help reduce or prevent atherosclerosis and atherosclerosis is considered to be blockage in the blood the increase in the resistance to blood flow so therefore by definition the increase of uh, blood flow to the actual um, organs that that's traveling to now what we're going to do separately from that is we're going to look at a different condition we are also interested in the idea that um, we can also prevent not just atherosclerosis but we can also prevent what's called arteriosclerosis arterio sclerosis now you might be thinking hang on a minute they sound pretty similar well the reality is they are pretty similar but there is a significant difference and i just want you to make sure that you can uh, tell the difference and i'll tell you what i'm going to do here see if i can do it i'm actually going to select this part of my canvas here and i'm going to i'm going to copy it and i'm going to paste it and hopefully then i'll be able to bring a version of this down here so effectively i've copied the same thing now the point i want to make about our arteriosclerosis is that when arteriosclerosis um, occurs it's actually the the damage here these these deposits end up damaging the actual smooth muscle that surrounds uh, the blood vessel in this case you can imagine now that the capacity of this blood vessel to actually squeeze in vasoconstrict or, or uh, decrease tone and, and relax out vasodilate becomes less because we have this damaged smooth muscle layer and it's that which we refer to as arteriosclerosis so, so can you notice here for arterial we've got damaged smooth muscle for athero we simply have the atheroma inside so arterio is actually outside the lumen whereas athero is actually inside and i will just mention that word atheroma these are plaque deposits fatty deposits in the blood and that's what of course leads to atherosclerosis now let's finish this off strongly a couple more points i'd like to make in general uh, i want to address for you um that we get with exercise we get what's called a decreased blood viscosity now you have come across the word viscosity i would imagine in a couple of different scenarios uh, we talk about it with regard to cardiovascular drift we talk about it uh, with regard to uh, dehydration but when the blood is um, 
is less viscous, it's more fluid, we get a decrease in blood pressure. So by having more viscous blood, we have a, a lower uh, blood pressure and that of course is a healthier condition to have. Further points, we also might experience cardiac hypertrophy. This is specifically and really what we want to refer to here is the, the myocardial wall of the left ventricle fattens and gorges becomes thicker and more powerful as a result of that the heart can increase its resting stroke volume and its maximum cardiac output that's a really nice situation to be in and and now i'm just going to come back to those same points all of these risks lead to a decreased risk of heart attack and a decreased risk of stroke so that's the main takeaways i want you to sort of have with regard to this topic i hope that's useful thanks